Hey everyone, today I'm going to assemble the Infinity Ultron Builder figure and have a closer look at the action figure. As usual, please like, share, comment, subscribe or even hit that super thanks button. So let's go ahead and have a look at this action figure now. First, popping his legs on and that's his right leg on as well. To get the arms on, you need to squeeze them inside those rather huge shoulder pads. So that's the left one there. Now squeezing the right one beneath that shoulder pad as well. And now pushing them into their sockets and clicking them in. And now finally popping on his head. And now that Ultron is done, let's put his weapon together. Simply popping these two parts together in the middle and they should lock in quite firmly. His weapon is a huge lens and it is cast in a metallic silver plastic. There are paint applications of a dark metallic grey over here, as well as these smaller design elements on the lower part of the lens. It's got quite a huge skinny handle in the middle, and while the weapon looks quite impressive with its size, it doesn't feel quite that impressive because it's actually made from a really rubbery plastic and super bendable all over its entire structure. So it's definitely child safe for sure. Ultron only has a gripping hand on his right side, so that's the only way he can hold on to his lens. So this figure could have definitely benefited from some swappable hands, so that he could hold his weapons in different ways. The wrist also feels a little weak for, for such a huge weapon and you can see the weapon slowly sag and fall. And next, this wrist is also articulated in and out, which is a strange choice. For a weapon wielding hand, he should be having his wrist articulate up and down instead. But either way, with a weapon of such intimidating size, I suppose he looks just as good holding his weapon in a more neutral vanilla stance. The Ultron Builder figure is a completely brand new sculpt. Most of the figure is cast in that metallic silver plastic, so it's got quite a shiny finish. But also with metallic plastics, you will see some swirling going on in the plastic as well. The other large part of the figure is of course his red cape that's cast in a flexible red plastic. In the overall proportions of the figure, he looks a little top heavy and I suppose that's faithful to his design in the TV show. I also want to point out a strange design choice, in that in his vanilla stance he's not able to fully straighten his legs or his arms. They're all sculpted to be at a certain angle. So to me that is a weird design choice, especially in designing the articulation of this figure. His head sculpt is quite awesome. He's got a helmet on top. And that's got four hits of red paint over here to look as if he's got four eyes. He's got two spikes coming out the sides of his head and that really makes the figure look intimidating. Looking at the mouth area, you can also clearly see that Vision's head is concealed beneath that helmet. Very sharp paint applications for the red of Vision's head as well as the green on the sides. And that's finally topped off with gold accents on the bottom of that helmet as well. So there's really great work. So including that hit of yellow for that stone on his head, that's really great paint work and design for this head sculpt. You will see that there's some paneling detail on the top of the helmet, and unfortunately with this sort of shiny metallic plastic, there's quite a bit of bad swirling effect over here on my copy. And now we have a look at his neck area, there's also gold paint over here just to bring out some couple of accents of the design of the armor. On his chest, he's got the rest of the infinity stones with their respective colors, once again, those colors really pop against the silver plastic and there's more gold paint applications to bring out all those little accents and design elements on the panels of his chest. So the colors of the infinity stones plus the gold accents as well as the sculpting for the different lines and panels on his chest and torso area really makes this figure quite eye-catching. And we move on to his arms. He's got really large shoulder armor pads. Once again, these shoulder pads also make the figure look intimidating and just a total badass. In keeping with the design of the figure, the rest of his arm is also cast in that silver metallic plastic and he's got sculpting to show panels down his bicep and some gold paint bringing out more of those design elements down his forearm and the back of his hand. There's also a cool spike element on his forearm as well. Now we move on to the back of the figure, he's got a red cape that's cast in a flexible soft plastic. It's not too heavy when compared to the figure, so it doesn't mess with the balance. His cape is attached to his body with a peg on his back, and the cape also has two holes in them where they sit nicely on the two spikes on his back. 
is a stripe of gold paint down the bottom of the cape and when you look at the cape from the front there is a curious bit of paint work as well. There's three hits of dark red paint over here which I suppose is kind of like shadowing or cell shading. A strange choice because none of the what-if characters have cell shading paintwork on them but I suppose these hits of paint actually make the cape look interesting. And now we have a look at his lower body. He's also got gold paint for accents around his belt area. And there are some grooves over here at his hip area and some huge rivets on his thigh. Once again, adding some nice detail to a figure that's mostly covered in smooth, sleek armor. His knee pads also have gold paint. Once again, emphasizing the shape around that knee pad and adding some bulk to his legs. And finally, he's got a cool design on his feet as well. Once again with the rivets and some sharp grooves on the front part of his toes as well as gold paint around his foot. So overall the sculpt of the, the figure is pretty cool and I quite like how intimidating he looks fully powered with all the infinity stones. For articulation his head is on a ball hinge so that spins 360. He doesn't get any sideways tilt but he can look down that far as well as up quite a good bit. He's got a swivel hinge at his shoulder, however because of his large shoulder pads he can only move his arms forward and backward but not all the way around and it goes out that far, once again also hindered by the large shoulder pad, however it does flex a little bit for you to get his arm out that far. He's got a swivel at his bicep for 360 spin, double hinged pinless elbows that gets quite a good range, swivel hinge at the wrist for 360 spin and articulating in and out. He's got a ball joint at the middle of his torso so you can spin him all the way around and you can hear a little clicking from that ball joint as you turn him around. There's some sideways tilting going on as well and he does get a little bit of range bending forward. It's both hindered by the range of that ball joint as well as this armor piece down the front and he does get some backward range as well. He's got ball joints at the hips and that goes out quite a good bit for a big character like Ultron. And there's also no problems forward and backward. He's got an upper thigh swivel for 360 spin. Pinless double hinged knees for good range. However, the sculpt of his calf does get in the way of the articulation. And finally, he's got ankle tilt for a good range upwards, downwards, and ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards. The figure is posable enough and you should be able to get him into many different action poses. However, once he's holding on to that lens, it might get a little bit challenging to pose this figure because of the sheer size and mass of the lens. His wrist is also probably a little weak to support that weight. And once he's holding on to that lens, it really messes up with the balance of the figure. Ultron also flies quite a bit in the What If TV show and he looks good in flight poses. However, once again, I do think he would definitely benefit from a posable fabric cape that would add a more dramatic effect to his flight poses. The Infinity Ultron figure isn't that much bigger than a regular 6-inch Marvel Legends, so we can have a look at some head swaps over here. The Killmonger head of course looks a little small on, on this body, but I guess it's fudgeable. However, the head does just sit on that ball joint. It's a little loose, but it sits just fine. And I've also seen some people swap the Vision head sculpt onto the Infinity Ultron body as well. Size-wise, Ultron stands at just over 6 and 3 quarter inches and that's just over 17 centimeters. Perhaps the most disappointing aspect of this figure is that he's just a little too small to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Watcher. Which based on the TV show, I would expect him to be the same size as the Watcher in those explosive fighting scenes. In this respect, I expect him to be at least one and a half times his current size to really make him that awesome and crazy powerful presence in the show. And here he is with some other characters that we've also seen on the What If TV series. And here he is with a couple of other Ultron action figures. Two of these from the sides are from Hasbro and this one is from Marvel Select. And I still think that he should at least be a hit taller than the Marvel Select figure. For a figure that looked Super promising from the promotional pictures, this builder figure Infinity Ultron falls terribly flat. The decent sculpting and paintwork is let down by the gummy and cumbersome weapon. And most disappointingly, this figure is just too small, puny in fact. In my opinion, this builder figure epitomizes quite a poor Marvel Legends wave with few highlights and I do hope a line with a bigger scale like Marvel Select comes along and thus a better version of Infinity Ultron. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below. 
subscribe to my channel, or even hit that super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe.